Hi, I'm Katrina, CEO and founder of Butterfly Media, and I'm just about to join Prosper on the online prosperity show where we dive deep into posting with purpose, understanding that your story is the most valuable thing you own, and how to keep the lights on in an AI age. Join us now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we dive into the minds of industry leaders and uncover the secrets of success in the digital age. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today we've got a special treat in store for you. We're about to embark on a journey with a true legend in the world of digital marketing. Now, Katrina, how are you doing today? Well, now you've just introduced me like that. I'm fabulous. <laughs> well, I think I've been called a legend. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's, um, I've seen the work that you're doing. It's not easy just showing up on the internet and staying. You know, there's one thing about, you know, writing a piece of content and then waiting for the likes, but coming back again and again and again, that's something a lot of people are not capable of. And you so happen to help others be do and have a happier existence or a business that's profitable and enjoyable, right? Yep, right. <laughs> it is a marathon. I never, it is a marathon. <laughs> but yeah you see now that's, to do. you see now that's a stuff for legends now like i said we're about to um back on a journey with this a true legend she's the mastermind behind a global digital media marketing agency and she has transformed countless businesses from just mere concepts to thriving businesses that are profitable and enjoyable so katrina I mean, obviously you are humble, like you have said, and uh, do not want the label legendary uh, sprinkled all over this video so far, but I can't help myself. Well, yeah. you could tell us a little bit about how you got started and uh, what sparked your passion to get started in digital marketing. I always joke, I was born before the internet, before the Simpsons and before mobile phones, right? So people say to me, no, that's not true. <laughs> you know, you look amazing. And I go, no, that's the Zoom screen. And I have to bring that everywhere I go to make sure that everybody knows who I am when they meet me. But because I was born before of all, all of this, I didn't sort of roll out of bed at five and go, I want to be a digital marketer when I grow up. It wasn't around. All right. So I was into sport and art and a lot of creative stuff mainly. And what happened over the years was I worked for legal firms and did art on the side. And that creative bug was just aching to be explored. But I didn't have an analytical brain. And what happened at 35, my hair went curly and my analytical brain dropped. And I'm like, oh, data, it's delicious. So once I had that, I could then have the, the analytical side. I then loved strategy. So from a creative, I sort of went into strategy and started to understand the power of it. And then I could apply that to my creative world, which is all the marketing and the copywriting and the um, visuals and dynamics. So I could take my art career where I used to run um, exhibitions and my creative writing um, joy, turn that into the marketing side, bring my own analytical brain inside and sort of measure the work that I was doing. So here I am. <laughs> Eventually, as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> Fantastic. I quite like that because you literally took all the skills that you had and combined them and now you've found your own space, you know, with yeah. the what's happening in the, in the marketplace currently. And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about your maybe time and experience in the legal firms that you worked in. What was what was your day to day duties like? Well, it was funny. I was working in pubs when I was twenty one, and the manager at the pub, his wife was looking for a receptionist at a legal firm, and I didn't know how to turn on a computer at this stage. And I thought, mm, these look like they're going to be something in the future that I think I might have to get my head around. So I took on the role as a receptionist teaching myself. I had a word manual next to me. I had my computer in front of me. The phone was ringing. So I would answer the phone and I would sit there and teach myself to touch type the word manual. So I would learn word at the same time as touch typing, dreaming that I was going to be as fast as the clitter clutter of the secretaries all around me that I could hear one day. So that was like when I was 21 and that career took me to some of the smallest and the biggest legal firms in the world from Melbourne to London to working with um, lawyers in different areas of Europe and the US as well at that stage. So it was an incredible career 
15 years as a senior PA for some of the biggest um, and, as I say, smallest legal firms in the world, which was an incredible experience. I'm still connected to a lot of the legal um, fraternity, if you like. Um, and that taught me a lot around um, systems and processes and admin and, you know, the touch typing comes in handy. <laughs> Although, thank God, now we can dictate. <laughs> and then it wasn't until um, 2012 when my mum passed that my uncle said to me, why don't you go into business for yourself? And I'd always dreamed of being in business. And I thought business owners had this, this superpower or this secret. They were born with this secret that I wasn't born with of knowing how to run a business. And I thought I had them on pedestals. I thought they were the bravest people in the world. And I thought I could never be like them. And my uncle said, do you want to be like them? And I went, no, no way. But he planted the seed. So when my mum passed, he said, let's, if you want to go into business together, we will. And I'll mentor you. So that's when we got a motel in 2013. And that was my first business. And I ran that for five years and then moved on into the other businesses. So my business career started in 2012. So it's been going 12 years. Wow, that's come around quick. So I learned everything I, I needed to know to a degree in the motel, um, but it wasn't my career of choice. And the creative side was always there. So I took up photography while I was there. I knew that I was going to create a photography business when I left that motel and that's what I did. So then I had Shutterwink, which was my startup photography business, and from there Butterfly Media was born, which is the marketing business we have now. Absolutely. That- Absolutely. <laughs> and thank you so much for taking us on that journey because now this really showcases the part that you were self-taught all along mm. the way. So many people would have gone to, yeah, typing college. Um, I used a program called Mavis Beacon where you yeah, had I to, remember Mavis. Yeah, where you had to um write ASDF and uh, the teacher that was using it at that time got me to write the ASDF on my hands. So I was literally a keyboard gangster before it was <laughs> even <laughs> I love it. Even fresh, you know. As so, so you're a gangster, not a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. And I quite like how you built yourself along the way, um, you know, in, 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 in things like that. And having built an empire from the ground up and now you're helping numerous businesses um, to be successful along the way. What is it that you're helping businesses with right now since you bring in, you know, so many um, skills and uh, experiences for them? Oh, that's, a, that's a loaded question, right? So the, the current client base I'm working with um, is helping them to shine online. So we're using all of the social media channels to shine online consistently, building out their personal brand so that they have more opportunities, more doors open for them, the more well-known they are online. And the online world is an incredible space for reach um, and connection. So we're building that out for them with um, content that connects and then using lead generation systems to bring in leads for them and ultimately help them close clients. Absolutely. And obviously a lot of people, the reason why they fail in business is because, first of all, they haven't mustered the actual, you know, ways to generate leads and you know staying in business now one of the fascinations that you had was the fact that business people are very brave people Um, you know is that still the same now that technology has changed or things have become softer because now some of these things can just be deployed by some gpt or you know of that nature Super interesting question. I think the essence of being a business owner is still about bravery or still about um, taking the risks and taking on all of the burden of running a business and creating something that creates impact in the world and, you know, does meaningful work. So it's not just about raising a business, it's about creating change. And that, regard, like the, the AI or any other sorts of tools that are arriving right now are just tools you still need to have an essence of a business owner. You still need to want to strive to be better. You still need to get up on those bad days, you know, those hard days. So you've got to fight over, fight and overcome all of those limiting beliefs and those boundaries you have around all sorts of things that come to run in business. So the first step's the hardest and, it, and in any age, it's going to be hard. Um, you know, it's just a scary step, that first one. Absolutely. And then you're right. <laughs> and then it's not scary anymore. <laughs> 
along the way, I mean, obviously you've you've had um, guides and people that have assisted you. The first one in in you know that you pointed out was your uncle, who is the one that sort of gave you the courage to then jump on and start on another business, um, which obviously, like you said, was not your path. But in essence, how important is it for businesses to have a mentor or a guide or somebody that can actually help them to prevent all those false starts that then um, end up, you know, having them at the graveyard of businesses where mm. they haven't made it. It's so incredibly important. It's, I think it's the only way. I don't know any business owner that does it alone. I started with a mentor. If it wasn't for my uncle, I wouldn't have had the courage to go ahead and do it. He he showed me a lot around finances and about, like I remember we were sitting in our new motel and three days had gone by and nobody had come in. It was the first three days that we bought it. And he's stressing, saying, oh, my God, what are we, how are we going to afford to keep those lights on out there? Now, I had never been in business before. My brain wasn't thinking about that. I was just like on my merry way. Eventually we're going to be okay, right? And he's like, no, we need to get money in the door. How are we going to go and get some clients in so we can keep this electricity on we can't go five days and I'm like oh how are we going to go do that right so then the whole conversation changes about we've got to keep the lights on it's not like you get a consistent pay anymore it's it's like weird your whole mindset changes right it's a massive shift so without that I probably would have sat there waiting for clients to come in or waiting for customers to come in and they wouldn't have, and the lights would have gone off <laughs> right so it's just that right? It's just that experience that you don't have that somebody else has that's been in the trenches. And, you know, I did it for a little while on my own and struggled and then had to get people in. So now I work with a business coach because it's impossible to do it on your own. So it's so important to speak to people that have been before you because they just know <laughs> and they know stuff. Absolutely. I mean, I, I viscerally believe we're here to leave, to learn and to contribute. And when, you know, in order for you to live the best life, you need to learn the lessons in order for you to be able to do that but lessons are usually your own lived experience or other people's experience and you know when you then invite other people to show you the way it makes it a whole lot easier now you're talking about you know uh keeping the lights on and things of that nature that's obviously something that happens in 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 the b2 you know brick and mortar type space in the online space you don't necessarily need to keep the lights on what what is it that businesses need to do in order for them to actually thrive and um you know in the way yeah. that help them yeah yeah they need to show up <laughs> literally need to show up online in a consistent manner so it's a lot of people see the online world as a chore or narcissistic or you know wanting attention and they just don't want to do that and that's fair enough I can understand that but it's a golden ticket it's it's a, an area that's available to so many of us that an advertising or marketing space was usually only available to the big budgets and the big boys right of television commercials in the older days or the radio commercials that or magazines which were expensive now we've got it at our fingertips and it's free say we pay for time pay with it with our time right but the absolute bounty <laughs> online is incredible. The reach, the connections, the opportunities, the conversations you'll end up having. You and I talking here online right now. I talk with entrepreneurs all over the globe with different sorts of ideas, doors opening all of the time. So the way people on the online world keep the lights on is to show up. Absolutely. That's it. And, and that whole showing up is where a lot of people now fret because – they probably don't like the way their voice sounds or the look of their um, face <laughs> on, 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 on social media, but you've got something that you help people with. And I think it's called posting with purpose. Could you just maybe walk us through what that entails? And if it actually takes away the burden that a lot of people are facing to keep their lights on, on the internet. My posting with purpose system was devised because I didn't want Mark Zuckerberg running my business anymore. Hey, Mark. <laughs> so social media and the online world goes like this all the time and it's changing. There's all sorts of new things coming and going. So I created a system that allowed me 
to stay in my lane, no matter what was going on in the outside world, I could bring in things if I wanted to, but let's just keep the business on track. So it's a three-post system, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, super simple for busy, busy business owners to get them to show up week in, week out, month in, month out, forever, right? Super simple, doesn't burn them out. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, education, stories, sales. They're the three core components. They can be still images or videos. They can be graphics um, or they can be um, seven-second reels that are happening on Instagram right now. So they that's, that's the core and that's what people run with every week, week in, week out, themed out over 12 months. When it comes to video, right, which is super nerve-wracking, I actually have this as a component in my academy, teaching people to do face-to-camera really quick, first video they ever make. We rip the Band-Aid off. We get used to this really uncomfortable conversation and know that it's going to hurt. Right. None of us want to sit here looking at ourselves. None of us want to, you know, hear the sound of our own voice or anything like that. So what I say is we're going to make a couple of 30 second short videos, come prepared with three bullet points so that we know what we're talking about. Right. Remember the hook headline, our three bullet points and we close 30 seconds, short and sharp. That's it. First one's going to suck. Second one's going to suck. Third one's going to suck. Right. They're all going to start to like, you're going to be like, no, don't like it. No, don't like it. Fourth one's going to start to be okay. By the 10th one, you've got it. And now you can create 30-second videos face to camera, one of the most powerful forms of content creation right now, like that. Now you're off and running. So ultimately it becomes about them and not about you. And that, when, that, when that flip happens, you don't really see yourself anymore. You're like, how can I serve you? What do you need to know? What am I saying to you? Changes everything. Wow, because so many people come in looking at, oh, I don't look good today, or maybe uh, people are going to, you know, see behind me that there's a sink of undone dishes or there's laundry, and then they just make it all about themselves. Instead, as you say, we need to reframe this and make it about the customer, not necessarily about us as a service provider, because it's the customer who needs our service in the end of the day anyway. Now, that then entails people having to tell their story or having to show up, like you say. And um, I've noticed on your website, you say, your story is the most valuable thing that you own. Let's share that. Now, what does that mean? Because just thinking about my story and my background, I'm starting to think, ah, if people knew this about me, Nobody's going to want me on the internet. So <laughs> we've all got, we've all got skeletons, right? <laughs> None of us get, get here without taking scenic routes, right? We've all got stories, but there are particular stories that we can share with our business. The reason I say your story is the most valuable thing that you own is it is your USP. Everybody says to me, how do we stand out online or how do we stand out against our competitors? Particularly if you're a service provider, People buy you, not what you do. So ultimately you have to stand out and show up, right? And the thing that's going to separate, the thing that separates you and I, Prosper, is our stories. It's the thing. Our stories have got our grit, our pain, the lessons, the wins, the joys, the broken hearts, the triumphs. It's got everything in there and it goes into shaping how we do business and how we interact with our people. The more you write your story and learn your story, the more you learn about yourself and you galvanize your skill set, what you're on about, what your values are and who you want to work with. It's incredibly powerful and it helps your clients see themselves in your story. So it helps them know that you're right for them. It's incredibly powerful. It's just the way humans work. We just work around stories. So your story has everything you need to separate yourself from your competitors and attract your right clients. Absolutely. I mean, your your life story is where a lot of people draw inspiration from. I mean, everything else is just pixels and maybe sticking it at Mark Zuckerberg if we can, you know, that's just the same. Thing. Um, I think he was born for it with me. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, you know, you, while we're, you know, talking about stories and things of that nature, you you brought in a personal aspect of your story, you know, about your mom and sorry to hear about that. I also lost my mom when I was 17 and that sort of really got me connected because then I think you and I don't have 
mom being the first person to like our blogs or mom being the first person to like our TikTok video just to make us feel good, but other people <laughs> have, you know, and um, that sort of, you know, sort of really got me to resonate with your journey and things of that nature. So I'm supposing there's people that are also going through stuff thinking, oh, I just broke my nail. I can't do my video. And then they hear that you don't have you know, that kind of support that they actually have, it makes them want to do more, be more and have more. And I think that is really, really good. Um, it actually assists them, but you've then gone on and sought and created a global family. And you also have created a global team around you to get that sort of support, which is what a lot of people are afraid of. Tell us how you've managed to, you know, create a team around you that offers you that, you know, support. It's funny you say that. Um, I don't have family per se, so it's not even even my mother. I my father's passed, it and a lot of my family have passed, and I don't have a husband, and I don't have siblings or children. I have my dog Betty, right? So Betty keeps me sane. She's my fitness partner. We've just come back from our walk. So there's Betty and I, and then there's all my support. So it's incredible for somebody that's fairly alone. I have. I, I'm a member of um, a business community that supports me incredibly well. And then I have managed to just connect with through the business and through other things that I've done with some other communities, connect on a global scale. My clients are global, so I connect very strongly with them as well. And I've just been lucky. I've got some amazing friends that would do anything for me and vice versa, and it's very it's strange to actually let them in and let them do these things because I'm just used to doing it myself. But... I don't know, you just have to let people in, don't you? So I've been ex extremely fortunate to choose well with the people that I've got in my life. I'm very lucky with that I've got some incredible humans that are turning up and I'm like, yeah, you're great, let's hang out. So very, very lucky, incredibly supportive. I have, as I say, my business coach who I would be lost without. And then I have um, business communities everywhere that I learn from, so from different stages. So how have I gone about it? expansion in the business like I've got a um, global support network or I've got some guys that are offshore that help me with the business incredible my team I would be lost without them no team no nothing I swear to god I'd be lost without them so it's just a matter of letting people in <laughs> right and taking the taking a few um chances with a few people and here we are <laughs> it's basically just Betty and I can't do it all <laughs> she is an honorary, honorary board member, though, and it's so it's so yeah. funny. Whenever whenever I have meetings with our clients and we get stuck on something, they all know that it's all going to go past Betty. We're going to go for a walk in the morning. Betty and I will have a chat. Betty will come up with the ideas, and then I'll have a meeting with them the next day, and we'll have the answer usually. So Betty's pretty key <laughs> to the business. Absolutely. We all need, you know, that fair friend or that person or that companion, you know, whether – human or otherwise that will actually be there for us and i'm qu yeah. i'm quite intrigued with what you've said because a lot of people um you know are trying to do that whole remote hiring and maybe they're not finding it um easy you know um i mean for you and i we can get along with a lot of people but so many people are not really open to that and i'm glad that you've given us permission to say, um, you know, just be open for, you know, people to actually assist you. Because I viscerally believe if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you really go with Betty, um, you know. So. <laughs> I was going to say, when it comes to hiring and getting teams down, it was an interesting journey. I had a friend that had teams overseas and that was the first uh, exposure I had to it. And she sort of guided me a little bit on how to hire. You know, she would say, so for particularly for VAs, if you want to go down that route, she would say hire three for one task and then find out which one's best suited to that task and have it as a small task. And this is how I do it. Have a small task to start off with just to get a feel. And you'll have three versions of that task come back and you'll be able to see who's a good fit. And then you incrementally, or the way I do it is incrementally increase those tasks so that the role gets bigger. I think a lot of people make the mistake of trying to get a unicorn in one person and give them all of these tasks and it's um, incredibly difficult for that person to be you, right? So you need generally need more people um, to do one of you. You'll need generally need a couple more because let's face it, nobody works as hard as the business owner. So you just need to keep that in mind and then also keep in mind communication and training so just to make sure that they are 
crystal clear on their roles and what they're doing and then how to um, deliver on the things that you need. So that's just an element I can find to fast track any of that sort of hire, if that helps. Oh, absolutely. Because so many people uh, automatically think that once you've hired, you know, that's the burden off of you. But that's only just the beginning because, like you say, I have some team members that are now working on the show because this is now our main thing but they started off doing something else and then they've had to learn um you know but they already have an understanding of what we do behind the scenes so it's just an easier transition um sure. and since i'm just you know like not that much of a big business for them it feels like a bit a bit of a promotion because now they're not doing what they started off doing and it feels like they're moving within uh the business so i'm I quite concur with what you're talking about there now for those that are watching they might be like oh, these guys are geeking out about dogs and digital marketing but what's, <laughs> what's in it for us let's just dive into your offering you've got um a unique offering where you uh can and deliver eight clients in 90 days uh, for the people that would have signed up. Can you just walk us through how this program works and, um, you know, what what are the involvements uh, in it? Is, is that a word, involvements? Yeah, that's a word. Yeah, let's go with that. And <laughs> yeah. How yeah. You're, you're helping people leverage, uh, is it content connection and, um, you know, creating businesses that are profitable, yeah? Yeah, I love this product. I'm having a ball with it. So it's 88 clients, eight, eight, not 88. <laughs> so it's eight clients in 90 days. And we use the social media platform. So it's organic marketing, no ads for this particular product, although, you know, there's options down the track, but we'll stay here. And we use um, content to connect. And then we use the platforms to connect even further. So content connect close. We're, re we're using content that, that is connecting. And we get that content via interviews with you. We generally spend about an hour a month with you and ask very specific questions that I know I need to create content that's going to connect in a certain way with audiences so that then I can connect further with them in the comments section on your behalf and then I can get into the DMs and start to bring them through a sequence into a close. We all take all roads lead to Rome and um, this particular product takes them through that whole journey and down into that either book a call Generally, it's the book a call because I like to grab the lead and make sure that we've got it rather than links and things like that. So that's generally it. And we use the internet to do that, to build out your brand. So you not only get the eight clients, but you get all this buzz around you, which is awesome while it's happening. So you generally go from crickets to rock star in 90 days. <laughs> Fantastic. I know a lot of people that would be uh... – Camping outside your proverbial online door just for give me the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, so many people go into business, they are a practitioner in what they do. They could be a lawyer, a doctor, um, you know, a consultant, and they know specifically what they are supposed to be doing. But when they open the doors, nobody shows up. Um, you know because somebody would have told them build it and they will come but it doesn't work like that these days everybody's busy twerking on tiktok so you mm -hmm. need to go and draw them in and bring them and what would be the best way that people can get started on this journey the eight for 90 as in to contact me do you mean or yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. reach out to me on linkedin or contact me at katrina at butterflymedia.marketing by all means, hit me up in the email, but come and see me on LinkedIn because you'll get to see what it's like. Absolutely. <laughs> is, there, is there a way for people to reach Betty as well? Or is Yeah, well, she goes through me. <laughs> Although she does have her own posse when we go for a walk, funnily enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, uh... I can't thank you enough for the time that we've had on the show today, Katrina, but obviously you're somebody who's, you know, like you said, you were born before the internet was uh, there and now you are head internet explorer, really, you know, helping people <laughs> find their way in this whole maze of the internet. If you could maybe go back in time and give yourself maybe the, a piece of advice, especially the time you're learning to type by yourself, you know, what would it be? And how do you think it's important for any aspiring entrepreneur to hear this advice right this moment? Oh, I would probably say it's going to be okay. It's just going to take work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because you've got to work at it, right? But it will be all right once you do the work. 
it's generally okay because that's where the learning is. So, yeah, it's going to be okay. You just got to do the work. <laughs> See, I was telling you about my gangster days, you know. Now, like you said, I'm a keyboard warrior, you know. I'm, I can snipe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sniper even I like it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely see well back in the time you also reminded me of something the internet had this sound the dial you know but now if you don't have fast moving eyes you won't be able to catch chat gpt writing things for you you know that's how fast things are going right now what do you what do you anticipate is coming, you know, especially in the uh, of, um, digital marketing? So any projections or anything that you're working on that people can get excited about right now? So I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling with, with the way that the world is right now that come, I keep saying 2028, I think it's going to be sooner, but by 2028, our current marketing models will be obsolete. The way we do things will be completely that's Absolutely. The end, that's the end of this episode today because <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's going to be easy to adapt with it and drive it more so than being driven by it so it's important that that factor is very very pronounced so don't let the machines drive you drive the machines so it's just a matter of learning how to do it and AI you know it's we're at, we're at a pinnacle where the world will change now. Moving forward, AI will definitely make that change happen and the way people are using it and making it stronger, will it's just here. So it's just a matter of working with that and then still keeping your integrity by 2028. It's going to be a very different world. I think, I think, <laughs> I think you're onto something. And you know what? The one thing that's not going to be changing throughout all of this is people's stories and it's the That's only right. thing that they can own and you know going back to your statement that your story is the most valuable thing that you own all these other um devices media like we've said internet started off you know with a mating call online now it's just a very fast moving pace and it's going to obliterate the way we've known um you know and have grown business Bye. You know, so I think as long as you maintain your message and you know who it's going to, the media can always, um, you know, vary and change. So I think you're onto something there, Katrina. Uh, stay in your lane. Stay focused on your client. Everything else will be fine. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Katrina. Even though <laughs> thank you, Rosma. We didn't get to meet um, Betty on the call today, but I think... Uh, she will be the one approving uh, of this message. And um, <laughs> hopefully hopefully, when we catch up again, um, she'll be there, you know, um, helping with the conversation. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Prosper. Thanks for having me. Great stuff. And there you have it, folks. Yet another enlightening episode with the legend. I told you, you know, you should expect this because with what we've gone through, we've learned how your story is the most important thing that you own. Um, the media can come and go. Like Katrina started off, you know, typing uh, on some sort of typewriter, but now words are now just being written for you using AI. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of digital marketing with our incredible guest, Katrina Collins. And be sure to rewatch this episode because I know there are some valuable nuggets in there that you might have missed out because it was a really fast-paced episode. But if you're watching it, re-watching it, you could always rewind, take notes. And then maybe if you've got any questions, reach out to Katrina in all the links that I'm going to be putting in the show notes below. But hopefully uh, 2028 20, doesn't come fast enough <laughs> while we still have the opportunity here to connect with our audiences. Um, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this information. Until next time, stay inspired and keep prospering. Bye for now.